Hey, what's up YouTube? Mike the Manic Geek here, bringing you my review of the Antec P9 full tower case. Now, this is another new entry from Antec, and it's, it, it's kind of an interesting one. So without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead, get into first person mode, and walk you guys through this case. All right, so we're gonna do our visual overview of the case, but uh, first, we're gonna talk about what it comes with. Now, this is your uh, box O stuff, okay, that comes with uh, some of your rubber uh, damping O-rings for your hard drives, uh, twist ties for cable management, and uh, these actually come much better organized than this. I've just already built in the case, so uh, yeah. Uh, we also get the obligatory baggy O screws and uh, motherboard speaker. Um, Let's see, we also have uh, some additional Velcro straps here that this comes with for, uh, for also helping out with cable management. We get uh, an EPS 12 volt extension cable. Um, nice thought here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not braided or anything and it's yellow and black and it's likely not gonna match anyone's color scheme, uh, but it's there all the same, so nice touch. Uh, we also have these um, brackets that are used for mounting a water cooling pump inside the case, and I'll, uh, I'll touch on that a bit later. And then we have the instructions for this case. Now, unfortunately, uh, these instructions are not particularly well thought out. There is some information that's missing here, especially with regard to how to use the water cooling accommodations, but Antec has assured me that not only are these going to be getting revised in the near future, but they're also going to be uh, posting um, a video online uh, for P9 customers explaining how to use uh, all the water cooling accommodations as well. And I will go ahead and link that in the video and set some uh, text here uh, if slash when that happens. So at the very least, they're working on it. All right, now moving on to the case itself. Uh, we can see looking here, it's got a fairly, uh, again, monolithic design. They seem to be going with that with a lot of the performance series cases anymore. Um, I kind of like the, the look of it here, but uh, this, this front panel is a huge source of contention for me. And I will, I will, get, I will touch on this uh, in depth at the end of the video. Um, but this case was initially designed for uh, sound deadening in mind. Uh, so, yeah, that is what it is. Uh, we have side accessible uh, dust filters here for the two 120 millimeter fans that are in the front of this case. The dust filtering is a bit restrictive for the front fans. Uh, again, I will touch on that more later. Uh, yet, the dust filtering for the bottom fan mount and the power supply fan mount are much finer mesh and I feel like that actually does a better job of not only filtering out dust but also making sure that the fans can actually breathe. Um, now one obvious feature here is we do have this gargantuan side panel window. Hi everyone. Uh, I really like the view that this gives the interior of the case because uh, it is a fairly clean interior as we'll see later on. Uh, not without its fault, faults but um, clean interior nonetheless. Now, for front I.O., we have a nice tactile power and reset switch here. We've got two USB 2s and two USB 3s. We've got your front audio and microphone jacks, as well as uh, two fan speed control switches up here, which have a low stop and high setting on them. Now, each of these controls three three-pin fans. Uh, so no, no pulse with modulated fan support, unfortunately, unless you feel like uh, clipping the connectors for this a little bit. Uh, but it is nice to have. Now these are paired into uh, two sets of three fans, as I just mentioned. Um, one controls the two front fans and a bottom fan, and the other one controls two roof fans and the rear fan. Uh, they are labeled, but uh, basically you can just set these up however you want, as long as you know what fans are set up where. Now moving along the back side here, we have this uh, mesh roof panel up here that clips, clicks out of place, and you can remove it to reveal what looks like um, more blank roof. However, uh, all of these panels are removable. Um, they do have a bit of sound deadening foam on the inside of them. It doesn't cover the entire interior, but this is very uh, fractal design-esque. Uh, remind, it reminds me a lot of the, um, an, an attempt at their, uh, their Majuvent style uh, roof panels, and I kind of like that touch. 
Now you can remove these panels uh, to reveal the roof fan accommodations in the top. Uh, removing the first panel reveals space for up to uh, 220 millimeter fans or a 240 millimeter all-in-one cooler. Uh, removing the second uh, panel here, which admittedly is a little difficult to do. Um, but that will also reveal more room for up to a 280 millimeter radiator or 240 millimeter fans. And then removing the last one here gives you access to the full 360 millimeter radiator or 320 millimeter fans that you can set in the roof of this case. Now, you notice there's uh, the last fan's a little blocked off there. That, that shouldn't impact anything in any meaningful way. Uh, but just know, if you go to mount a water cooling radiator up here, the barbs are going to have to face that side of the case. Uh, trying to set them towards the rear, you're likely going to run into uh, collision issues with the case, even with uh, an all-in-one liquid cooler that uses small end tanks. So just keep that in mind. Now moving over to the rear of the case, there's really nothing special to report here. Standard bottom mounted power supply mount area. We have eight PCI Express expansion slots. Um, these covers are actually pretty decent. Uh, unfortunately, one of them that was sent to me had a really unfortunate uh, mishap with the paint on it. I did, I did let Antec know about this. Uh, it is unfortunately a quality control issue that is being addressed. Uh, so hopefully that won't happen uh, for too many other customers out there. And then your I.O. slot, of course, for the motherboard and a rear accommodation for a 120 millimeter fan, which in this case is also supplied with the case. So you get a total of three fans that come with this. Now, the right side of the case is clearly nothing to write home about, uh, but this does show off a large swath of uh, the black paint that was used for this case. And I actually, I really like the paint job here. Um, it's fairly durable. Uh, it's very, very even uh, apart from the, the mishap with the, uh, with the rear I.O. panel uh, or the, uh, the PCI Express uh, cover. But as you can see, it's something of a fingerprint magnet. So uh, if you have oily fingers like myself, um, you will want to make sure that you, uh, you keep th this pa these panels uh, clean. There is a bit of that sound dampening, um, uh, for lack of a better term, tape uh, that's on this side panel. And actually both panels are fairly rigid for what they are. But now without further ado, let's go ahead and strip this thing down to its skivvies and get to the inside and see what's going on there. All right, so as you can see here, we have the case broken down to uh, just the bare sheet metal now. Now, unfortunately, as you can see here, uh, front IO is unfortunately attached to the roof panel. Um, also, there's this weird grounding cable that I keep seeing on Antec cases. Um, not really sure why uh, their particular IO requires it to be grounded to the chassis rather than being grounded anywhere else, but uh, I find this a little problematic, mostly because when you're trying to get the roof panel back on, there's a chance that you could pinch the cable uh, sort of on the outside of the case there, and I've actually almost done that before. And uh, I would imagine that losing the grounding cable for the I.O. is probably not the best thing ever. But anyway, uh, see a better view of the, um, the roof fan accommodations here. Uh, moving into the case, we see that we have room for up to a standard ATX motherboard. Uh, it's not going to support anything larger than that, mostly because of the curvature of the motherboard tray right here where all of the cable routing holes are. Now, also, as you can see, they are not grommeted. However, uh, they have an incredibly well done uh, rounded edge along all of them. So I really wouldn't worry about any of your cables being damaged or anything uh, during management. Uh, it just would have been nice to have the grommets there to hide some of the cables back there. Uh, now, as far as your EPS 12 volt power is concerned, it's gonna get routed through this top slot for the CPU cutout here. I actually really like this implementation more so than uh, just a dedicated opening set somewhere up here because this gives you more room to work with your cables and you honestly, in my opinion, you get cleaner cable runs when you do it like that. So I really like that. Uh, now with the rear fan here, you can see up top there's, uh, I won't focus, but there's a bit of a 
uh, clip right here that Antec gives you to help route your fan cable. Uh, unfortunately, the adhesive for it's really weak, and if you try to remove it basically at all, uh, the adhesive's not really going to work well anymore. But you can just get some double-sided tape and it'll work again. All right, so moving on to the hard drive cages. Uh, we have room here for one, two, three, four, eight hard drives of either three and a half inch or two and a half inch variety. Uh, the trays do just pinch to slide out. And they also have, uh, interestingly enough, accommodations on the bottom for either an 80 or 92 millimeter fan. Now, putting a fan on one of these is going to basically eliminate the possibility of using the, uh, the caddy below it to hold a hard drive since the fan will interfere here. Uh, but I guess if you wanted more airflow for your hard drives, that's cool. Uh, you also have space on the side of both of the cages for mounting an extra 120 millimeter fan to help move air through the cages. And frankly, it's kind of a good thing because these cages aren't the freest flowing cages that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, they are also removable. You just uh, pinch the top right here and the top cage will slide out. And then you just slide it back in and it clips back into place. I actually really like that. Uh, the bottom cage is also removable. Uh, this one is fixed in with screws. There's four on the bottom and two in the back here. Unfortunately, you can't relocate these anywhere else. And if you only want to use one cage, it must be this one because this cage, uh, and for that matter, this one as well, uh, will not stay fixed to the five and a quarter bays up here. Uh, would have liked to have seen that option for system builders, but that's sort of eh, a little bit of a nitpicky thing. Now, since we're sitting here in front of the hard drive cages, also wanted to touch on this guy because removing this, yes, you will lose uh, your, your, uh, your three and a half inch bays here, but along the bottom here are some strip, are uh, two uh, strips worth of openings in the floor of the case for you to mount those aforementioned uh, pump mounts before. Now you also have this slot right here that can be used for mounting a tube reservoir to the wall of the chassis uh, here on the on the motherboard tray if you wanted to. And I kind of like that they give you those options in built. Just really wish that the instructions would have been a bit more clear on how to use these for first time system builders. Five and a quarter inch bay, uh, not removable, fixed in place, spring loaded screws to hold things in place. And if you want to, you can set an additional three and a half inch hard drive in the bottom of the cage. So kind of like that. Uh, now, if you remove these cages, you do have room for up to a 240 millimeter water cooling radiator in the front. As you can see right here in the front of the case, uh, there are slotted openings right in here that'll allow you to reposition the fan so that you can mount a 240 here. Now, the problem with that is that once again, uh, this fan uh, is going to be a little blocked off if you set it here, uh, but I will touch on that later because ultimately it doesn't matter. Now, uh, the slides for holding the dust filters in place. Both the top and the bottom were missing screws on mine out of the box. That's an unfortunate cost-cutting measure. Uh, I've been in touch with Antec and they basically tell me that uh, all of their samples of the case have this going on. Guys, don't cut costs like that. That just makes it look way cheaper than it absolutely needs to. And I know you're capable of better than that. I know you are. Bad. Speaking of bad, we have these punch out covers for our optical drive bays. My thought on these, they're not actually the end of the world, but if you want to block off your optical drive bays in the first place, make them removable and give us the option to add uh, a taller radiator in the front of the case or anything other than this. This, uh, again, personal thing, it's not actually a deal breaker. I just don't, I'm not a really big fan of this at all. Now, moving to the back of the case, we have good news, everyone. Uh, there is ample room for cable management back here. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems keeping all of the cables for your system nice and organized and clean running and happy and joyous and 
fun loving. Uh, we also have these built in uh, plastic clips for managing the cables for your fans at the front of the case, or even potentially some of your hard drive cables uh, routing down here. It's it's a little funky looking, but functionally it works just fine. So I don't actually have a problem with those. Uh, I like that. We also have room for two discreetly mounted solid state drives back here. Uh, these are This is fixed in place with two screws. Uh, you just remove the screws, slide this out, and mount your solid state drive in place. Bob's your uncle, you're done. Uh, we also have these zip ties, or zip ties, <laughs> zip tie. We also have these uh, Velcro straps here for uh, for your cable management. There's three inbuilt into the case and then we have uh, the extra attachments that you get uh, in your accessory box. The cables were almost done well, but you can see right here, this guy. Why, why is this blue? Antec, you've been doing so good with this in the past cases I've looked at from you. Why is that blue? That should be black. There is no reason for it to be blue. Stop. I guess really all that's left to do is get a system built in this and see what all the hardware looks like. So let's talk about what it was like to build in this case and then get more uh, in depth with this front panel. Um, building in the case was actually extremely easy. It was really straightforward. Nothing really, nothing really surprised me here. There's ample room for cable management, and realistically, this cleans up really well. Uh, I really like the way the reference system pulled itself together in here, and I honestly, I wouldn't mind normally recommending a case like this for your next system build. Unfortunately, the front panel is something of a deal breaker for most people, and I'll explain why. See these grooves along the side here? You would think that these would have some sort of airflow accommodation to them, but they don't. You would think that this panel right here would have been mesh instead of just a flat panel that pops out of place. It's not. It's just a regular flat panel up here. And even removing this to expose these front fans to direct airflow, it works, but it leaves you with this gaudy looking B stamp that's in the middle of the cross brace here, which I can only imagine is a result of the manufacturing process. But there's just nowhere for this panel to breathe otherwise. The only place that air comes in is here at the bottom where you actually grip the panel to pull it off of the front of the case in the first place. That's nowhere near enough room for these two front fans to breathe. Now I will have been showing you guys some footage at this point of some of the testing that I did with the front fans here, uh, both with the dust filters in and out with the front panel open and closed at various speeds and it's, it's not a very good story up front here. Never mind the fact that the front panel can't breathe at all, but these are probably some of the most restrictive dust filters I think I've ever encountered on a case before. And you can't really have dust filtering that's that aggressive when you don't have supplied fans in here that also have a lot of static pressure to overcome this restricted airflow here. It's just not really a, a good recipe for good airflow. Uh, I just, I, I kind of really feel like this entire front of the case needs to be completely revised in order for this to be usable. And it's especially troubling considering that I found the DIY PC knockoff variant of this case, which is essentially the exact same thing, only it actually has mesh in the front instead of a solid block off plate, and it comes with two additional fans. Honestly, this front panel kind of totally ruined the whole uh, experience of building with this case when you realize that these front fans can't breathe at all. So if they're not getting air in the first place, why would you then also want to put a radiator here or populate all of the hard drive bays? Everything would be starved for air and your case would be working on negative case pressure. And that's not desirable in, in any sense. So unfortunately, I have to tell you guys to pass up on this one and consider some of the other options out there that are in a similar price bracket if this is what you were looking at. Um, if Antec were to revise the front panel on this case, absolutely I would take another look at it and compare to see what has changed and see if there's any improved airflow characteristics that I can go through and actually recommend this as a buy for you guys. Because apart from that, it's actually not a bad case. Great build quality, great paint, great plastics on the outside, plenty of IO included, 
built-in fan speed control for up to six fans, accommodations for radiators throughout, removable hard drive cages. It came so close to being such a good case. It's literally just this front panel that kills it for me. But sound off in the comments down below, guys. Let me know what you thought about the Antec P9. Also, have you guys seen any of the new stuff that they've been showing off in some of the trade shows recently? Let me know what you think about some of those new cases down in the comments below. I may or may not have one of them coming in to take a look at. But anyway, guys, until next time, take it easy, YouTube.